welcome you all to english class today we are going to start with poem 10 the tale of custard the dragon from our book first flight this year because of this global pandemic two of the poems uh, poem number 8 and 9 they have been deleted from the syllabus so that's why after poem number 7 now we are taking poem number 10 which is the tale of custard the dragon now look at the picture and you can have a look a little girl and a cute dragon though it seems quite opposite that a dragon can be cute but as the picture tells us that the dragon is very cute and then a kitten and a dog they and a mouse they can be seen here so it's going to be some interesting poem i think Let's have a look about the poet first. Uh, this poem is written by Frederick Ogden Nash. Was born in nineteen o two and died in nineteen hundred seventy one. He was an American poet and uh, very famous for his light verse. He was known as the producer of humorous poetry. He received Sarah Jessica Hale Award in nineteen sixty four. before we read we must know that this is an amusing poem which is written in the style of a ballad ballad which is a song or a poem that tells us a story and uh, which is written in short stanzas usually having four lines and we must be familiar that ballads they generally narrate tales of courage or heroism this poem is a humorous ballad close to a parody very humorous funny and we are going to learn that it uh, reveals in front of us that heroism of a dragon but it is written in such a light vein that to show us that appearances they can be deceptive so in its humorous treatment of the subject the poem resembles a parody Let's get introduced to the lesson to the poem. Ogden Nash has written a poem about a little girl Belinda who owns many pets namely a black kitten, ink, grey mouse, blink, yellow dog named Mustard and a coward dragon named Custard. The poet has described every character to be brave except the dragon who is a coward. But the whole situation changes when a pirate attacked Belinda's house. No one else had the guts to face him. It was the dragon that killed the pirate and all the characters are happy because they are saved by the dragon but quickly change their thoughts and describe themselves to be more powerful had the situation not been so confusing for all of them so just a an illustration taken from some source from net i have not drawn or made these illustrations they all have been taken from various sources here and there just to make the lesson more interesting and quite you know reachable to you all people so that you can understand things in a better way so this is the summary of the poem the tale of custer the dragon it's a ballad we have read it about earlier it is a humorous poem about a cowardly dragon named custer Custard is a pet of Belinda, a little girl who lives in a little white house with her pets. She had a black kitten, a grey mouse, a yellow dog, and a cowardly dragon. The poet says that all of them are very brave except the dragon, and others are described as brave, and are compared with animals like bear and tiger or lion. By the but the dragon is very timid. It's very coward. He always demands a safe place for himself. All the other characters make fun of him. but one night they are surprised by the entry of a pirate in the house all are surprised by that and all of them get frightened and start hiding here and there but to everyone's surprise the dragon not only tackles him but also eats him up as all of them are saved by custard they thank him but at the end they realize that <clears throat> they used to make fun of the dragon because of his being timid So all of them suddenly start saying that they are more brave and could have handled the situation in a much better way. Here the poet has tried to say that sometimes a timid person is the actual hero in the toughest situation of life. We should never ever 
judge somebody a person or a thing on face value what they appear they may not be the same so this is what the poem revolves around now let's start with the reading of the paraphrases and their explanation since it's going to be a very long poem comprising of 15 paragraphs so i have knowingly chosen to start it from the very first part let us uh, start reading the first ever paragraph here two are given side by side belinda lived in a little white house with a little black kitten and little gray mouse and a little yellow dog and a little red wagon and a realio trulio little pet dragon now the name of the little black kitten was ink and the little gray mouse she called her blink and the little yellow dog was sharp as mustard but the dragon was a card and she called him custard so let us see the explanation of the first paragraph the opening stanza it tells us that the there are so many characters in the poem we are told about belinda she is the owner of a small white house and she had four pets among these pets were a small black kitten a small mouse of gray color a small yellow dog and realio trulio that is uh, using the poetic license the poet and has changed the spelling of really and truly to realio trulio which he thinks that would add an element of humor also in the poem so just to give a humorous impact and using his poetic license he instead of writing really truly he has written realio trulio and a realio trulio little pet dragon so belinda also had a really truly a dragon as a pet generally people would never prefer having um, a pet which is a dragon but belinda had that so this is the first paragraph that tells us so let us have a look at the literary devices that we came across in the first paragraph rhyme scheme if we look at the uh, rhyme scheme it is uh, it is actually for the second paragraph ink blink mustard custard similarly where the dog is compared to mustard that we say that the yellow dog was as sharp as mustard here mustard doesn't stand for the seed mustard mustard here actually stands for mustard uh, you might have heard mustard paste which uh, people apply on bread and then they eat it it's kind of a bread spread uh, which is uh, a little pungent in taste that's why the dog who was of color um, yellow has been compared to uh, the mustard paste which tastes a little bitter a little pungent to some people so that's why it is a simile here alliteration of c repetition coward and she called him custard c sound anaphora where repeated use of the word at the start of the two consecutive lines and the little gray and the little yellow so this is these are this is uh, how we are supposed to notice the literary devices used in the paragraph number one and two another literary devices used here are house and mouse wagon and dragon repetition it's the use of the word little oxymoron where two opposite uh, the words with opposite meanings are used as i was uh, saying in the beginning pet dragon i said it knowingly because that was an oxymoron you know dragon is um, considered to be something wild and fearsome people are scared of it and then pet as soon as we say the word pet that reminds us of something submissive very sweet and uh, tameable but uh, this is not possible so when the poet says pet dragon he uses an oxymoron there anaphora which is the repeated use of word at the start of two consecutive line and a little and a realio trulio like this refrain repetition of a sentence again and again and a realio trulio little pet dragon this is where the anaphora has been used refrain has been used sorry poetic license i told you while explaining 
that uh, the spelling of really and truly or real or true it has been changed to create a musical humorous effect to realio and trulio now this is the explanation to second paragraph second paragraph tells only that what was the name of the kitten black kitten that was ink the name of the little gray mouse was blank see so rhythmical so musical the names are ink blank mustard custard and yellow dog was named as mustard because he was as sharp as mustard as sharp as mustard i already have explained to you and the dragon was a coward dragon was very timid he was a weakling who used to be afraid of everything and she called him custard and that weak dragon what was the name given to him it was custard now see the custard the dragon custard the dragon had big sharp teeth and spikes on top of him and scales underneath mouth like a fireplace chimney for a nose and realio trulio daggers on in on his toes spikes which are the sharp nails scales uh, might have seen when the animals are not given a bath for so many days and even human beings when their skin is too dry we start having scale scaly skin daggers knives barrel which is a container rages anger so uh, this is third and fourth paragraph custard the dragon had big sharp teeth spikes on the top of him and scales underneath mouth like a fireplace chimney for a nose and really or truly or daggers on his toes truly this picture describes what has been written here exactly about custard the dragon let us read the first fourth paragraph also and then we'll explain them one by one Belinda was as brave as a barrel full of beers and ink and blink chased lions down the stairs mustard was as brave as a tiger in a rage and custard cried for a nice safe cage so this is the explanation to paragraph number 3 the poet describes i guess while writing somebody had dyslexia so instead of b he wrote d but please read it describes the poet describes the dragon that it had a it had big sharp teeth and spikes on top this means that its skin was pointed scaly and the lower part it had scales which were bony plates to protect the skin his mouth has been compared to a fireplace because what does the poet say the poet says mouth like a fireplace so again it is a simile mouth like a fireplace and chimney for a nose so it's not a simile but where two things have been compared mouth has been compared to a fireplace but the word like has been used so it is a simile so the poet says that uh, his mouth has been compared to a fireplace because it is assumed that dragons can release fire from the mouth even his nose is compared to a chimney chimney for a nose which is used to pass out smoke his feet are like a sharp knife dagger it's written here really or truly daggers on it toes you can see the claws here how sharp the claws are that's why the poet has used daggers on his toes so these are the literary devices used here rhyme scheme is a a b b simile is used where dragon's mouth is compared with fireplace mouth like a fireplace refrain where there is a repetition of a sentence again and again and realio trulio like this word they this phrase has been used again and again and metaphor chimney for a nose when it was said that mouth like a fireplace chimney for a nose so if the poet had said chimney oh, sorry nose like a chimney then it would have been a simile but here the nose is like chimney directly it has been said chimney for a nose so it is a metaphor This is the explanation to paragraph number four. Belinda was shown as brave girl, as brave as a barrel full of bears. Barrel is a drum, when which is full of bears. So she's been shown to be very brave girl. And ink and blink means the cat and the mouse. They chased lions down the streets. Means they were also um, brave enough. He says that Belinda was as brave as a group of bears, and uh, Ink and Blink were so brave that they could hunt lions. 
Mustard was as brave as a tiger in a rage. Mustard was the dog, if you remember. So he says that uh, Mustard, the dog, here has been so brave that he is like a tiger who has been uh, who is in rage, who is in anger. But Custard cried for a nice safe cage. Very um, interestingly, but uh, contrary to what we ever think about a uh, dragon. Though he was so big, huge, yet he always wanted to live in a nice safe cage. So he always demanded a safe cage. Uh, see, this is the red wagon that was uh, written over in the paragraph. I mean, kind of uh, this kind of things you can find out. Wagon is a kind of carriage. So time scheme is A A B B. Alliteration has been used. Simile has been used, and assonance has been used. Rest of the paragraphs we'll take up in the next video. Till then, keep reading, keep revising.